Hey guys, so before we start this video, I just want to give a quick disclaimer. Uh, this video is quite emotional sometimes. Uh, it comes from the heart. Uh, if that's not what you're looking into, there are hundreds of other videos on this same channel. Uh, I do hope that you do watch it, and if not, I completely understand. Anyways guys, I hope you at least enjoy or maybe learn a thing or two. Hey guys, welcome back show. So today I'm going to try to get through what I've learned over the past year. Uh, I'm going to give a little back history of our channel and why I'm doing a year review. So I'm going to put a little timestamp here of when I get past the backstory and get into what's going on with me today. So our channel started off with just me, my wife, and my daughter just playing around. Uh, it literally is just us recording our events of our life, going out, trying new food, trying new things. Uh, the whole ideal idea of this channel was, these are memories. These are our memories of us going out and doing things. And someday Roxy's gonna grow up and move on and not wanna do them, but we still have the memories of doing them. And also it's opened up other doors of us being able to do more things. Uh, so in the process of all that, uh, we've had a lot of fun adventures. Um, but sadly, last year, uh, right about Thanksgiving, Ruby, which was my wife, passed away. Uh, she passed away kind of suddenly. Uh, there are videos on that. I can't tell you the quality of them. I've never rewatched them. Uh, she passed away of COVID. But ruby was an amazing woman of god i know for a hundred percent fact she's with jesus in heaven without any questioning i know that for a fact uh dina also has a lot of different testimonies and i'll let her tell her testimonies in her words uh there are videos of those i'm gonna try to put them in the description below so check them out as well and she can tell you her story in her words uh, there's no way I could do them justice. So us as a family, we spent time together. We were always together. Uh, if I wasn't at work, Ruby and Roxy stayed at home. We always, whenever I wasn't at work, we were together. We grocery shopped together. We shop, we cooked together. We cleaned together. We went out on adventures together. We just really enjoyed being time, spending time together. Well, Ruby passed away with COVID, like I said. And everything changed. Everything changed in a matter of a couple of weeks. Uh, my whole world changed. Ruby took care of everything. Uh, she took care of the bills, the food. She was an amazing southern cook. You know, bacon grease and everything, all that good stuff. Um, of course, Roxy uh, was homeschooled, or is homeschooled. But that was her teacher, her mom, that was everything. So in a moment, our whole world flipped. So I want to start from that aspect and then move forward from that. So one of the things I want to thank God for, me and Ruby had a conversation several months prior to any of this stuff ever happening. Um, she took care of everything. Like I said, she took care of the bills. She took care of feeding me and cooking and cleaning and all that stuff. And I told her, I said, you know what? If something ever happened to you. I said, I'm going to be in real trouble. She said, what do you mean? I said, I don't have a clue. I mean, I make the money. You spend the money. Uh, I get food. She gets dresses. It was a very good <laughs> system we had going, but I had no idea where any of that stuff went. So I asked her, well, I, we talked about it and she made up a emergency book. That thing was like the Bible to me. Uh, it had, so after she passed or when she went in the hospital, I knew who we owed money to. I knew when it was due, uh, when the doctors were asking me, cause all of her prescriptions and stuff, she took several different prescriptions. Uh, all that stuff I had right at my fingertips. So that's number one thing on my list that you need to do today if you have anybody that's dependent on you, write down today any medication you take and your bill cycles. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have 
username passwords or that would work too and unlock code for your phone uh, I cannot tell you how many auto passwords I don't have a clue that Ruby set up all right so that's number one on my list of things that need to be done uh, don't put it off go ahead and do it uh, something else I would uh, if you're in my situation if all of a sudden you're married and you become a widow or uh, one find some good help um, find good close friends find somebody who's gone through uh, I cannot tell you how many phone calls and text messages and chats I've had over the past year that really 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 helped me now I am a upbeat positive person I try to believe the best I look at the best God says to look for the best is really really hard sometimes but there's always that speck of light now I, I can tell you this over the past year that speck of light to me sometimes got really really small and really really faint uh, I had some or still have I have some really really amazing friends and family who have reached out and if you ever get the inkling that hey I need to talk to so-and-so or maybe I need to check in on so-and-so do it uh, you would have no idea what kind of difference it can make for a person um, something I would suggest too, if you're all of a sudden find yourself being a widow or, or lose somebody that's close to you is anticipate anticipate it that you're gonna have dark times try to realize that you're in that moment but it's also just a moment um, another thing I would suggest too is as soon as somebody passes there is a rush there's a rush of people who, who will help you there's a rush of people trying to feed you there's a rush of things that have to be done uh, hospital stuff cemetery stuff funeral stuff all that stuff it's a big rush so you don't have time to really break down uh, you're too busy planning and calling and texting and all that stuff one of the things I would highly recommend doing is accepting help I had to swallow my pride and realize I could not do it all I have lots of people offering help and I had to start taking them up on that they're offering and if you offer help accept <laughs> that people will accept your help uh, the food that people brought over made a world of difference the phone calls that we got was amazing sorry I'm anticipating Roxy the outpouring of love was phenomenal now ours may be slightly different because people around Greenville and Green County know us uh, there's a lot of times I was going to just go buy some groceries and I would get stopped two or three times and tell me I'm so sorry for your loss and that kind of stuff truly truly made the world to me it, it meant everything still does uh, we still run into people that say that but something I want you to anticipate is that only happens for a short period typically uh, for a short two three week period you will get phone calls you'll get text messages you'll get flowers and cards and all that stuff for about two or three weeks and then everybody goes back to their life they go back to whatever it is that they were doing their jobs and their families and their their homes and there's nothing wrong with that uh, there's nothing wrong with them going on with their lives but anticipate it um, have some close friends people you can really confide in um, I have some really really amazing amazing friends who have reached out just at the right time it's amazing how God does that um, try not to tear up on y'all uh, try to think of what else the newness uh, I say I was married it would have been 25 years uh, sleeping in an empty bed um, making decisions we've always made decisions as a family making decisions on what to eat that's one of the weird, one of the weird things was right after Dana passed I go okay now what uh, I think we ordered a pizza uh, I really wish I had a better story than that but 
life happens. We still have to eat. Now, I am atypically, when I have a problem, I like to head right into it. I don't like to go around it. I like to face things and get it done and over with. If I have to go through something, I'm ripping the Band-Aid off. I am going straight through it. Uh, this, I've tried to do that same thing. And like I said, I am a very upbeat, very positive person. I've always looked for the best. I've had some really, really, really dark times. I really don't like admitting that. But I've had some really, really dark times. But God. God has gotten me through them. Um, something I would highly suggest too is get a firm foundation. Uh, I've been a follower of Christ as far back as I can remember. I think I got saved around age nine. I may not have always lived like I was a Christian, but I've been a Christian since I was age nine. And all through my life, I've had difficulties come up. This far outweighs anything else I've ever been through. Um, not only for myself, but for my daughter as well. Um, just getting through it. I have lost a lot of myself in this. Um... It's new ground. Y'all gonna have to pardon me for just a minute. By the way, sidebar for a second. This is horrible. It's a uh, lemon tea snapple. It's bad. It's really bad, but I don't have anything else in the car. Um, over the course of a year, I had made a decision early on I am not making any life-altering decisions for a whole year. For one whole year, I don't want to make... I knew that my emotions would take control, and I knew that mentally I probably wouldn't be at a good place to make decisions. And there's times, like I said, I've lost a lot of myself over this past year trying to find who I am. All right, so with saying that, it sounds bad. It sounds real bad. But I am rediscovering, okay, do I like this because I like it or because we liked it? Do I do this because we like it or because she liked it? Um, little funny story. So one day I was coming home from work. I stopped by McDonald's. Uh, they had Big Mac. They had Big Mac sale. Uh, buy the combo, get like one for a dollar or something like that. Well, I knew Roxy liked Big Macs. Uh, her and Dana, you see Big Macs all the time. So, I thought, eh, I don't really care for it, but I know she likes it, so I'll get it. So, I, we got the combo, we split the fries, I give her a Big Mac, uh, we eat, and then we talk. And while we're talking, she goes, yeah, I don't really care for Big Mac. I said, like, what? She's like, no, I don't really care for Big Mac. Mom liked Big Macs. She said, I eat Big Mac because Mom liked Big Mac. Well, I <laughs> told her, I said, I got Big Mac because I thought you liked Big Mac. So here we are, both of us getting a dinner that neither one of us wanted. So it's things like that. And that's a small thing, but over the course of 25 years, we've done so much stuff together that it's hard to separate, okay, me and you are not a conversation that I had. It was always us and we. So it's been almost a year. I've taken a lot of time and a lot of thought and a lot of overthinking. Uh, try and make decisions. Uh, one of the decisions we've made is we are going to stay in Greene County. Uh, we really enjoy Greene County. We love the food, the atmosphere, the people. Uh, I really, really love that. I love the community. Uh, I love y'all. Y'all are amazing people. Uh, so that's for the now. Uh, I haven't made any life-altering decisions just yet. Uh, I did get a couple of new tattoos this year, but I don't consider that life-altering. They're not like across my face or anything. So uh, a couple of things we have learned too is how to cook. Uh, I'm not a cook. Roxy's not a cook. 
So something we tried out for a while was HelloFresh. Uh, I would, this is not sponsored anything. <laughs> they feel like they want to, they can. Um, so the HelloFresh came to the house. It was like three meals. But what it truly did is it triggered us to get into the kitchen. Uh, us getting in there chopping and doing the whole recipe. It gave us a lot of good ideas on how to do things. Now we're getting better. We actually cooked our own Thanksgiving dinner and we've cooked a lot. Uh, we actually don't eat out very much. Uh, typically we eat out twice a week. Uh, we'll eat out a breakfast at some point and we'll eat out for a dinner, usually a video for one or the other. Sometimes both, sometimes y'all get both. Um, i trying to think what else I've learned over the past year, how to do laundry. Uh, I, I can do laundry. It, I'm not near as particular as what Dana was. Uh, Roxy has learned a lot. Uh, she's done a lot of dishes. She's done a lot of cleaning. She is growing up so, so, so fast. Uh, Y'all, I feel like I'm rambling, but I do want to get a lot out here. I don't know what else I want to get across. I was trying to come up with a list. Um, I know one thing I've learned being on my own. Now, when I say I'm on my own, it's because Roxy's a minor. I'm an adult. I have to make decisions. Uh, so one of the things I've learned is I'm stopped. I'm stopping chasing people who are actively running away from me. Uh, over the course of my life, I've spent a lot of time, money, and effort into relationships that people don't want to have. Uh, cards, letters, phone calls, text messages. In saying that, I am not one just to cut anybody out of life. If they want to be a part of my life, they are more than welcome to be part of my life. As long as they're not a destructive person, Y'all are more than welcome to be a part of my life. I love good conversation. I love talking to people. I love spending time with y'all. I love spending time with Roxy. And I'll invite anybody into my house. But here's the thing. I am not spending the rest of my life chasing after people who don't want to be a part of mine. It is a very, very hard decision that I've made. But I'm going to do it. Uh, I love y'all. But I'm not chasing after everybody. That doesn't mean I'm not going to phone call or text message or send you a card or send you a message or reach out to you. That does not mean that. It does mean, though, that I, if it is not both of us doing it, then it will stop. Plain and simple. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've learned. I've also learned how to shop. Uh, <laughs> it sounds weird. I never spent the money. Uh, that was all Dana. Dana loved shoes and dresses and coals. Oh my lord, she loved coals. I cannot tell you how many pairs of shoes I found in my house that still have the stickers on them. Still a little ticked off at her over that one. Uh, so, grief. Grief is different for absolutely everybody. Everybody you ever meet who has lost somebody close to them is grieving in a different way. I am only a year in. Uh, sometimes I will look like our normal videos. That's how I feel most of the time. But it hits. Sometimes I can't control it. Uh, I really, really, really wish I could just and throw on a happy face. And sometimes I can. And. But inside, I am still dealing with the aftermath of all this. Uh, Dan and I were a one in a million picture perfect Hallmark couple. Uh, what you saw on camera is the way we were. Uh, so coming from that into being single, I've never been single. Sorry about that. Uh, we're actually at the dentist's office. Roxy was having some work done yesterday. We're back again today. Uh, so they need me in the office to fill out paperwork, all that good stuff. Uh, so I want to pick up where I left off yesterday. So I've never been single. I got married when I was 19. Me and Ruby have been together or were together for almost 20. Well, we were together for 25 years, uh, married for almost 25 years. So we got married really quick. Uh, so I spent all this time adulting, but never really truly adulting. Uh, Ruby took care of everything. Uh, she took care of all the bills, all the, 
uh, food, that kind of stuff. Now, like major decisions we always made together. So this is a whole new world for me. Um, I just turned 45 and I'm just now paying bills. I'm just now learning how to cook and do laundry and all that stuff. I've been 1000% pampered. Uh, my whole marriage, I was extremely pampered. Now, Ruby was pampered too. Uh, Ruby got pretty much whatever Ruby wanted. And we were both very happy with that situation. So that's where I'm coming from with this. Is It's a whole new world that I'm trying to get into. Or try to figure out again. So today, I really want to buckle down and talk about grief. Now today, for me, is a really good day to talk about grief. Because I'm not sad. Uh, for odd reasons it's kind of an overcast day which you would think would make me sad but it's not so as a person i've always tried to look for the best in things i look for the best in people i look for the best in situations uh even our food reviews and stuff we look for the best in things we kind of downplay some of the negative sides of things everything's got a negative side uh, we always try to look for the best of things so with saying that i've gone into this situation with that mentality some days are really, really good. Like I said, today. Today's a really good day. Uh, early on in the process, not so good. Uh, I had some extremely, extremely dark days. Uh, days I literally laid in bed and just could not get out of bed. Um, I know God. And I know God has a plan for everything. And just with that mentality sometimes the darkness just gets so overwhelming and not to say i won't get there again uh i actually went on some medication i took some anxiety medicine and that really helped for the first couple of months uh, i really it didn't numb me because i didn't want to be numbed uh that's the main thing i wanted to face this head on like i said i didn't want to numb my way through it because eventually you have to still deal with these feelings and these situations uh, so it helped me sleep, which was a big thing. Uh, some of you may know, and some of you may not know, I've battled with insomnia. Uh, I had insomnia for a really, really long time, and it was really hard to get out of that. And I knew my pattern, and my pattern was picking up where I wasn't sleeping. I'm still not sleeping really well uh, with all this situation. Even over the past year, it's hard for me to get a whole night's sleep. Um... So with the grief side of that, there's different aspects of it. Um, one of the things that really hit hard for me is there's something called widow brain. I had no idea about it. I've never heard of it before. I don't have the greatest memory as it stands. Uh, Ruby always, that's one of the reasons why she took care of all the bills and stuff. It's because she remembered everything. She remembered everybody's birthdays and celebrations and anniversaries and all that. She's the one that told me. And then I said, oh, happy birthday. And they're, oh, thank you. And I had no idea. So <laughs> with saying that, there's something called widow brain. Widow brain is almost like dementia or Alzheimer's or one of those type of situations uh, for months, uh, some of the people I worked with, I'd worked with for a couple of years now, and it really, really, really struggling to remember names. Uh, simple things, simple things. I, I had to write down almost everything just so I could remember it. Uh, notifications on my phone, uh, whenever I heard anything, I had to write down or I would immediately forget it. So that's something I had to struggle with. Um, not to get too deep, there's also called something called widow's fire. Uh, that's a lot of times when you hear a widower that shortly afterwards ends up in a new, brand new relationship. Not saying that's you, but sometimes it's a deep desire. And me, I try to analyze why. Why is this? Why is that? And that aspect, I truly understand because... I didn't feel. I, I felt hollow. Uh, no matter what I did. If I ate, if I drank, if I... Uh, not drink. I don't drink just because I don't like it. But um, but with that, you just want to feel something. Uh, I just felt numb. Completely, 100% numb. And this wasn't the medication. This was just overwhelming 
numbness, hollowness. I felt like a chocolate rabbit where the outside looked really good, but the inside was nothing. That's where I felt. That's where I was. Um, along with that same lines, uh, this past year has been really, really hard on my weight. Uh, I've gained 45 pounds. Uh, some of that has to do with me and Roxy learning how to cook and eating out more than we should have. And nobody's stopping me from having ice cream for dinner, which I did, or ordering stuff for lunch, which I did, and still do some. Uh, but it was just trying to fill a void. Uh, me trying to re-figure out what I wanted, what I thought I wanted. When you're in that state of mind, you really don't care. Uh, you just want to feel something. Uh, I even, at some point, even bought a couple of packs of cigarettes. I used to smoke years ago. Uh, I've never been addicted, thank God. I've never been addicted at all. But I'll get a crazy craving for it. And I think it's something about the memories tied in with the past. Um, so I bought a couple of packs of cigarettes and smoked them. Roxy never knew that, and she'll never watch this video, so I don't have to worry about that either. Um, but something I was reading, uh, I've read several different, I want to say self-help, is that, hold on just a second. So one of the things I really want to do is get into a couple of devotionals. I really envy uh, those of you who can sit down and read like a book and watch TV. Ruby was really good at that. She could read like four books and watch TV and talk, have hold a conversation. Uh, for me to sit down and read is extremely hard for me. I have to have complete silence. I read out loud, and it's hard for me. So a simple devotion really helped me through this. Uh, a couple of them. One of them I really enjoy is Max Lucado. Uh, Max Lucado takes a big story and chops it into a bunch of little stories, which really helps. But one of the devotions I was reading talked about the trauma of losing a loved one. And I don't know why, but it never crossed my mind that me and Roxy were in the middle of a traumatic event. A uh, traumatic event in my head is like losing an arm or a major car wreck or your house burned out. That to me is a traumatic event. We lost Ruby, which was a death. And I had segregated the two and it was really like an eye opener for me that we were in a traumatic event and our lives have been altered. And once that started clicking, it started helping. Uh, something else I had read which may help you as well, is to name it. Today I feel happy. Today I feel sad. Today I feel anxious. Or I feel anxious about this situation. The mind needs to categorize certain aspects of your life. Um, when you start saying, and you can just say it to yourself. I'm not saying you have to make a vlog and tell everybody and the whole world. I'm saying it really helps to categorize your mind. So if you're feeling depressed, say, you know what, I'm feeling depressed today. And like I say, you can just talk to yourself, you can talk to God, pray about it. And through that, I started feeling better. I started having less bad days. Now I say that on a good day. Now tomorrow I may feel completely different about the situation. Uh, so over the months, I know this video is crazy long. Over the months, things have changed drastically. Uh, for the better, I, am I 100%? No. Do I think I'll ever be 100%? I don't know. I truly don't know. I, I think I'll get to the point where I'll be okay with it more, if that makes sense. Um, as the days go on, it's not that I'm forgetting Ruby. It's that I'm learning to live again. It's a whole new world, like I said before. It still gets me. Uh, certain songs trigger it, certain thoughts. Um, certain things in the house can trigger it. Um, and like I said, it, 
I have no control over this. Uh, I know at our house, uh, some things were easy gone. Uh, Ruby's clothes, Ruby's uh, shoe collection. Those, to me, which seems kind of odd, were easy gone. Uh, they were easily let go, and it didn't bother me a single bit for Roxy to take off with some of her clothes and give some away and donate or whatever. That kind of stuff was really, really easy. Uh, some of the pictures in the house we've changed over the course of the year. Uh, some things just were screaming at me. I couldn't take it anymore. Uh, there was a big collection of pictures that we had done as a family, just on family trips and whatnot, and I had to take it down. Uh, they actually got replaced. I'll show a picture. Uh, Roxy has taken up some painting, and she painted me this collection of pictures, and I love them, and they bring me lots of joy. Uh, one of the things that I have not moved in the house, Ruby sat in the same spot whenever she read. Her Bible and her Bible book uh, cover, and that has not moved. Uh, I've cleaned it a couple of times, but it has not moved from where she left it. I just can't bring myself to that point yet. So little things like that. Um, so as you're grieving, make note of these. Uh, I would highly suggest finding a Facebook group. I would love to give you my Facebook group that I'm a part of, but part of the reason why I really enjoy this Facebook group is that nobody knows me. Uh, sometimes I need a vent. Sometimes I need to say something and I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. I just need a vent and I need to be with people who understand it. And I found an amazing group. And if you contact me directly, I may give you the direct link to that Facebook group and you can be a part of it. Uh, and if you are going through this, my heart goes out to you. Uh, I'm so sorry for your loss and your feelings are valid and you will make it through this. So I want to try to wrap this up somewhat. I'm not sure how many parts of this there will be. This may be it, but something I've decided is, so I've got Roxy with me. Roxy will be with me for at least three years. In three years, she'll be 18 and she'll make her own adult decisions on what she wants to do. Me, one of the things I've decided is I want to make a difference. God has left me here for a reason. I don't want to spend the rest of my life trying to figure out what makes me happy. Because ultimately, that will end in disaster. Uh, you see that with extremely wealthy people, with people in Hollywood, who have completely and totally destroyed their lives hunting the elusive happiness. I don't want that. I don't want to hunt for happiness. I want to give happiness. Uh, ever since far back as I remember, I'm a giver. I love to help people. I love to do things. I Part of the reason why we do this YouTube channel, too, is to give back to the community and give to other folks and give experiences and thoughts. So with that being said, I want to find something that helps, whether it be me volunteering at a place or me finding a job at a place. I want to make a difference. I don't have to change the world. I don't have to be Bill Gates or any of those kind of people who have billions of dollars and have changed the world. If I can change the world for a couple of people, I think that's worth it. It, it matters to those couple of people. Um, God has me here for a reason. Uh, he says he'll never leave me nor forsake me and that he'll never put more on me than I can withstand and all, through him I can do all things. Every single one of those is valid. Do I want to go through these things? Do I want to do those things? No. Do I want a cushy pl uh, plush, plush life filled with things that try to make me happy? Yes. Will they make me happy? No. It's a very tight conundrum. But I do know this. I want to be a positive in this world of negative. Excuse me. <coughs> I want to be a positive in this world of negative. I want to make a difference. Whether it be through YouTube, which I love doing. I love doing this with you people. Or whether it be in person or, like I said, an organization or a company. For the rest of my life, I want to make a difference. 
Um, what that means, I don't know. And time will tell. And But that's where I'm at right now. Uh, I want to make a difference. I want to leave a positive in this world. Whether anybody remembers me or not is irre irrelevant. Um, one of Ruby's greatest fears was that nobody knew her. And that nobody would come to her funeral. And that she didn't make a difference. She made a difference. She made... Whew. She made a difference everywhere she went. Ruby made it a point to stop and talk. She made it a point to talk to people. Really talk to people. Whether it be a cashier, a cart pusher... Uh, a random person on the sidewalk, Ruby stopped to talk. And if she was ever, and if she ever stopped and talked to you, she truly cared. She didn't do it just to be nice or make polite conversation. Now, I'm not saying that never happened. But she truly cared. And I want to be like that. And I think she's made a difference. I know she has. So, I'm going to wrap this up. Y'all see enough waterworks for me for this video. Uh, down in the comments, if you've made it this far, leave down in the comments what your recommendations are. Uh, one, on how to help. And two, how to deal with grief. Uh, not necessarily in those orders. Uh, and if you ever met Ruby, I would love, absolutely love to hear a story. I wasn't with her 24-7. There are times when she did things on her own. Anyways, guys, um, I'm going to try to wrap this up. Whether or not there's a another section of this, maybe. I don't know. Anyways, guys, it's been real fun. Uh, balling and crying and everything else. Uh, this has been a one-year anniversary update. I just want to tell you that we love you guys. Thank you for support. Thank you for being with us through all the changes and all the randomness. Thank you for being here with us to help us through this as well. You're a part of this as much as we are. Thank you for making a difference. Uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure you like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon below. You'll get more videos like this. Lord, I hope that they're better. Um, and remember, God loves you and so do we. Till next time, guys. Big.